On March 9, 2012, the Chamber of Commerce hosted a state legislative coffee sponsored by Twin City Motors. Senator Doug Overby and Representatives Art Swan and Dr. Bob Ramsey took time out of their busy schedules to give a brief overview of the bills going through the legislature and answer questions from the audience. Here are their opening remarks. Well, I, uh, I want to go ahead and get started. My name is Dave Bennett. I'm the CEO of Cherokee Millwright, and I have the honor of serving as the governmental chair this year for the chamber. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Joe Tipton and the Twin City family of dealerships for hosting this event. Joe, thank you very much. We you know, we talk a lot about uh, how blessed we are in Blount County, and I can tell you from uh, the viewpoint of a uh, business leader in, in the business community, um, I am so thankful for the leadership that we have in our contingent, the General Assembly. We have the best um, contingent <coughs> legislators in the state, and I've seen it firsthand with Senator Doug Overby, with Representative Art Swan, and with uh, Dr. Bob Ramsey. Um, they're not just voices, they're leaders. And for those of us here, we're able to go to them and they're leading the state, so we're able to drive the state rather than ride the state, and that is a blessing. So I'm honored to be here with these folks, and I'm gonna get out of the way. Again, we've got Senator Doug Overby, Representative Art Swan, and uh, Dr. Bob Ramsey. And you know, speaking of leadership positions, um, Senator Overby, uh, he served as Vice Chair of the Judiciary Committee. Um, Art, you you're, uh, you serve as uh, Secretary of and I'm going to this up. <laughs> <laughs> Children and Family Services. So again, leaders. Dr. Ramsey is Chair of State and Local Government. Powerful, powerful committees in this state, and these folks are leading. So again, thank you for your service to our community. Thank you for what you do for us every day. And, and uh, as a final note, these folks are up for election this year. We need to make sure we send them back to the legislature. So without further ado, I'm going to let the senator over to go first. I move we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Dave, for, for those kind of very, very gracious uh, words. And Joe, thank you and Twin City for sponsoring this and for all of you for, uh, for coming out this morning. and. Um, and for all of your, your support and giving us the opportunity to, to serve you in, uh, in Nashville. Um, and we've got great folks on uh, here in our cities and counties uh, and the chamber uh, to work with. And it's a pleasure to, uh, to have that such good interaction uh, among <coughs> our city officials and our county officials and, uh, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Kathy, you and Brian do a uh, and your team do a great job of staying in touch, and we uh, we very much appreciate uh, appreciate that. Um, Dave, there's one other member of the team that <coughs> that I would like to mention, and that's um, uh, Joe McCord. Um, we miss uh, Joe's service uh, uh, as a member of the House, uh, but now as Chief Clerk of the House, he is the conductor, uh, the traffic cop, uh, to keep uh, the track. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was my <laughs> poor choice. <laughs> uh, but does, <laughs> does a great job of uh, keeping the trains uh, uh, running on time. But is very much a part of uh, part of the team uh, team effort. And uh, to have the opportunity to work with uh, with Art. Art brings his uh, local government background and former state experience. Uh, and Bob Ramsey to chair state and local more bills. Bob won't say this about himself, but more bill, House bills are referred to the state and local government committee than any other uh, committee in the House. And I think that's a tribute to the confidence that Beth Harwell and uh, Joe McCord place in uh, Bob and, uh, and his <coughs> leadership. Um, we are um, moving, moving along this year. Uh, we tackled uh, redistricting uh, uh, first. In January, each of our districts are a little bit changed. Uh, art, probably arts more than uh, the rest because he's losing the Sevier County part of uh, the 8th district. But on the other hand, that gives uh, Blunt County two full house districts. Um, Bob uh, stays all in the <coughs> county, but it's uh, changed a little bit. And um, uh, to 
Blount County and Sevier County's credit, our population grew more than the state's population uh, percentage-wise, and so the Senate District, you've given me the opportunity to represent <coughs> and to lose uh, 20,000 in population. And some of the upper Northeast Tennessee Senate districts had to grow. And of course, they can't grow east, north, or uh, south, so they had to grow southwest. And uh, I unfortunately lost portions of Sevier County uh, out of the district, but tried to keep all the tourist areas together so that Blunt County and uh, Pigeon Forge, uh, Gatlinburg, um, Wares Valley, Sevierville are still all within the, in the same district. And, we all work together on our efforts on, uh, on tourism, along with Commissioner Susan Whitaker. Uh, <clears throat> I talked to the Chief Clerk of the Senate last week in terms of uh, legislation working its way through the uh, process. We're about a month ahead, both in committees and on the floor of where we were last year, so the business is, is getting done and being transacted. Uh, we are dealing at, at, with this <coughs> terrible problem of, uh, of synthetic uh, drugs, which is a, uh, our law enforcement tells us is going to be, uh, soon to be a bigger problem than the meth problem, which is a huge problem. And we've got a couple of bills that we have voted out of the Judiciary <coughs> Committee to deal with this scourge of, uh, of synthetic drugs. Uh, really, what, mainly what is left is uh, the budget. Uh, I'm assuming uh, Art or Bob, subject to what you, you think, uh, the governor will probably wait until we have all of the first quarter numbers uh, in from January, February, March to propose. Uh, the, the way the process works, the governor proposes the budget early in the session, but then typically after the first quarter, we'll come back with uh, a supplemental appropriations <laughs> bill for the current fiscal year and then a budget amendment for the coming fiscal year. Uh, once those numbers are in and we see what, uh, whether revenues are coming in ahead of projections or behind projections, so far they're coming in ahead of projections. And so we have, I think, some level of confidence that we may be able to fund some, some important things like our family resource centers uh, in our schools uh, like the proposed decreased uh, funding for uh, family support in the area of mental health, and there's a proposed de slight decrease for children advocacy centers, and we're hopeful to, to be able to, uh, to have the funds to, uh, to do those things. I'm really encouraged about our children advocacy centers. Uh, yesterday, a, a, I think a dozen folks from Blount County traveled down for the, uh, the courage of one event uh, to highlight awareness of child abuse and make sure everybody knows that it's a legal requirement to support abuse, sexual abuse or abuse of children. We had a great group from Blunt County there, but speaking uh, in favor of our children advocacy centers all across the state, we had uh, Randy McNally, the chair of the Senate Finance Committee, who said that he would be introducing uh, an amendment to the appropriations bill for child advocacy centers. Jim Kyle, the uh, Democratic leader in the House, was there also speaking in that vein. So um, I've got some confidence we can do that funding that really needs to be done because ultimately programs like that save the state money if we can get children off to a good start. Dave, thanks again for your kind, kind words. I appreciate it. Pass, pass the baton. Yeah, I believe you've about covered it. <laughs> <coughs> You'll have to excuse me. I've got a little bit of the flu bug. And uh, I think I missed my first day of session yesterday in six years. And, uh, don't like to miss, but I didn't. I would have been of no use to anybody, including myself. But I'm in a fog this morning trying to struggle through this. But a lot of what Doug talked about would apply to what's going on in the house. Uh, things are, are probably moving at the fastest pace I've seen for kind of midway uh, in, in six years. Uh, we're, we're very much uh,
starting to focus on some more controversial and some better bills and getting them done. And, uh, you know, you, you see in the press a lot of individual little bites about things that are somewhat controversial. And, and I had one of them in the House, and, and it's the term limits bill. And it's something that I feel very deeply about. Uh, I, I look back historically in the patterning of our General Assembly, and if you look in the 1901 General Assembly, there was like 73 to 75 freshman members. So the vast majority, three quarters of the body, were new. You looked at 1925, same thing. I mean, almost identical. Uh, you looked again in 1951, same thing, almost identical. Then you look at 1975, drops all the way down to around 22, 23 freshman members. Strings on out into, into older members. <coughs> I think what occurred during those time periods or what occurred eventually was we went from an annual session or from a biannual session to an annual session. So we were meeting every other year up until 1968 when we changed the Constitution and allowed for annual meetings. When we did that change, we saw ourselves going to a more permanent body, more reflective of the Congress of the United States. And, you know, I don't know whether biannual is the answer to uh, flip back to that's the answer or not. I mean, these are more complicated times. But it, it gives us a window into the past how differently we look at things and how our society has changed as a result of how our government has reacted to it. And we as members have made more careers out of this business. And you all are members of the community. You should be a part of that body in that movement all the time of a, of a rotation of new thoughts and new ideas. None of us hold in ourselves uh, a specialness that nobody can replace. I remember my dad told me in business, I said, Dad, what will happen to this company when you're not here? He said, the company was, was here when I wasn't here, and it'll be here after I'm gone. Somebody always takes your place, always fills that place with a different set of, of life experiences and talents. So, you know, I'm going to continue to push that as long as I'm there because I think the message got to start here and if it starts at the ground level in the states, it will make itself into Washington where the paralysis has become so bad that we can't, we can hardly operate our government now. So, <laughs> I don't think it's a partisan issue. I think it's just an issue about right and wrong, and uh, you know, it's it's something that's a passion in me. Uh, as far as things that are unique to to house legislation right now, Bob can tell you more specifically because most of what's happening is coming through state and local. If you look at their calendars right now, when I've been down there with bills, Bob, you you can spend two or three hours just waiting to get over to, to one person's bill, can't you? And, and, and he's, he's handling a heck of a load, and I'm not envious at all. Um, you know, uh, you've taken on a, heck of a, a good job, and, uh, and everybody's very proud of what you're doing down there. Uh, but uh, I'll let Bob carry on from there. Thank you, Art. He's burst my bubble. I, I always thought that I was going to be a household name for centuries. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they won't run without me. <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate the kind words from uh, Art and uh, from Dave. And I, I appreciate working with these gentlemen so much that we, uh, we uh, communicate well and, and uh, we try to uh, keep a common mind if one of us gets something that's interest to all of you or any of you uh, we all try to work together it's a very good relationship uh, 
thank all of you for being here. I've seen some of you in Nashville this year in, in different capacities, and some of some more of you will come. And um, I, I thank you for being involved. I thank you for your emails. And, and, uh, you, you can slack off. <laughs> <laughs> certainly to our benefit. Uh, their interest was to streamline from top to bottom, and that's one of the names of, of a study that they did, streamlining from top to bottom in the state government. And they have been making a lot, huge effort to, uh, um, to find the ways to eliminate it, whether it's uh, long-standing committees or, or um, uh, long-standing employee uh, groups that, that don't seem to be pursuing the correct path that they were initially designed for. Uh, we have uh, a, a red tape tour by the uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor, Ron Ramsey, that has tried to focus on making business easier to transact in, in Tennessee. And they've come with lots of bills, um, but the, the consensus is with the Senate and the House this year that we want to finish uh, as early as possible. And the, the uh, uh, roadblock to that is the fact that we this second session we've had more legislation filed than ever before. Uh, there stand, stood about uh, 3,500 bills, which is way excessive for a second session. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, uh, having large groups of bills, the red tape tour has generated a, a tremendous number of bills that affect uh, planning and business opportunities in our communities. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and <coughs> so uh, we have a large calendar of bills that, that deal with planning, that deal with changes in uh, eminent domain and, and non-conforming uses that will uh, make it easier to uh, to do business developments and residential developments and change some planning uh, is not all good. And certainly, our, our we have representatives from both cities and, and all the incor unincorporated cities. Or they're all incorporated, but uh, uh, the smaller cities. We we have input from them, from the school systems, anything that's going to affect them, and we certainly listen to it. Um, the, we have had the request from law enforcement, um, the mention of synthetic drugs. We had 31 bills on our synthetic drug uh, calendar, uh, which, of course, a lot of them were reflections and, and duplications, so, but we have made some progress in that, and uh, uh, several of them were passed. But we're told by our leadership, our caucus, our administration, that, that what we need to focus on this year is jobs and the economy. And so that's really where we're putting our interest. Uh, as Art said, we have one responsibility when we go to Nashville to make the state run, and that's to pass a budget. And uh, the rest of the articles the state will run without it. Some of them make life better. And so we have to sift through the, the massive amount of uh, legislation and, and make sure we get the right ones in place. Uh, sometimes I laugh and, and tell people a third of our legislation is to fix something that we did bad the year before. So uh, that's pretty typical. But uh, I'm suspecting that we will pass probably 25 to 30 percent of those bills. Uh, we're very attentive to the uh, governor's initiatives and he's had some massive initiatives. Um, with uh, redoing the Civil Service Act, with uh, uh, making some changes to school uh, uh, programs, and, um, and I think
think he, we support him, and I think he's, he's moving in the right direction. Domestic violence is one of his initiatives that he has, and uh, uh, so we, some of those have fallen by the wayside, and, and maybe will be taken up later. For you folks on the Chamber of Commerce, I know two of your issues are school calendaring and uh, uh, elected superintendents. And I'm told that those two issues are going to come back up this year. Uh, some of you are interested in wine in the grocery stores. Well, apparently that issue is dead and, uh, and probably won't be brought up again until next year. But uh, we were warned last year if we didn't vote for the calendar bill that this year we would be tortured immensely with the elected superintendent bill. So, so I do not doubt that that may be the, the uh, 